We're on? Are you sure? Okay. Uh, so now that we got that lighting done, we're going to take it up a notch. Well, you know, just different, something different. We're going to work with a reflector now and a light source. So our main light, again, was coming down on that last uh, uh, glamour lighting situation. What we're simply going to do now is put on a reflector to control the light source a little bit more. Uh, I should talk a little bit about what kind of lighting we're using here. These are alien bees. They're considered to be, uh, I don't know, low-budget lighting. Your buck. Best bang for your buck. Uh, they're the same company that uh, produces uh, white lightnings, which we also have in the studio here. And uh, they're very inexpensive, excellent company to deal with. Uh, we've had nothing but uh, rave reviews uh, with, with these lights. Customer service is awesome. You buy direct from the manufacturer. They have cases and stands, and I highly recommend uh, checking them out. The thing I like the most is the, the bulbs are very, uh, very affordable. My old lighting system, it would be like $150 for a bulb if you can get them, and it's just, it's just crazy. And I've never had to replace a bulb. Okay, so now what we have here is a 7-inch reflector, and it's very directional, as you can tell. You see Renee's face. You can see the shadowing effect. Maybe if you come over here a little bit, you can see it a lot stronger. Renee, can you tilt your head this way a bit? Cool. Just like that. And with this kind of lighting, this is actually a good time to talk a little bit about uh, some of the lighting angles. There's your typical Rembrandt lighting, and you need uh, two stops, stop and a half difference in fill light coming in here, uh, which I would use as a uh, reflector, or you could use a, another light source to fill in right here. But the main light right here, you can tell there's a triangle on her left cheek. And then you can modify it a little bit more and call it modified loop lighting. See it right there? Look at the shadow. Well, there's the triangle right here. And now the idea behind this is called short lighting. That's a very common phrase. A lot of photographers are aware of short lighting. What we're lighting is the short side of the face. The width of her head is here to here. This side here is in shadow. Uh, that's the effect you get. The shadow side is to the camera. When you get the shadow side to the camera, it's short lighting. You can use that basic approach when you're photographing just about anything, commercial lighting or... Uh, uh, any kind of object, uh, but for portraiture, I like short lighting the most. The idea behind broad lighting, can you turn your head this way and look over here? There. The width of her face is entirely flooded in light. The idea behind that is for somebody who's very, very skinny and gaunt, it will fatten their face up. Uh, I find it serves no purpose, so... I just I like the other approach for anybody. Come on this way. Tilt your head just a bit. Because it sculpts the cheekbone. It sculpts all the way down to the chin and the jawbone. With this kind of lighting here, uh, whether it's Rembrandt, whether it's loop lighting, or whether it's any variation thereof, uh, it sculpts the face and you get that nice carved lighting effect. Whether or not you have a softbox or a reflector. Now a reflector, obviously is a very, very directional light, and it simulates the 40s look. So if you had a couple of these, if you took one here, and let's say we took this one right here, and we brought it around, and we just created a nice, uh, strong kicker light effect. It's very brash. It's very bold lighting. So... So if we take it out, I'm going to show it to you without, and here's with the kicker light. It's the same kind of light source. We have a reflector, and it's very directional. With the hair light, um, we have very uh, harsh but functional lighting for certain shots. Uh, you might want to try it and uh, see what you come up with. There are certain situations with which you can experiment with that, and, and it it works for that kind of lighting. If you want that 
very intense uh, Marilyn Monroe 40s type lighting. A uh, lot of strong, harsh shadows. You can play with the fill light. Uh, basically, that's all you use, just reflectors. It's very, very simple. And uh, I'm just going to take a quick shot of Renee, and we're going to show you what that looks like later on. So if I find my light meter. <laughs> Ding! All right. Try that out. Woohoo! Try that out again. Okay. I'm going to keep that at about two thirds of a stop stronger than the main light. The main light now is, uh, yeah, two thirds of a stop less than the kicker light. Because we really want to amplify the look of the kicker light. Turn your head a little more towards me. Good. I'll show you what we got. When your main light is a reflector, it's very directional. Very much looks like the type of lighting that they used to use in the 40s and the 50s. It's very strong. It carves out the features of the face and very strong shadowing, as you can tell by the shadows beyond the nose. And also, if you look within the eyes, you see again the uh, catch lights caused from the light itself are more apparent. And I see a grid.